Hello, this is a battle screen. This uh, is a basically a standard battle screen where you have three enemies and two and two allies here. Uh, you can have any number. This isn't limited to a specific set of four characters, uh, but it does have three unusual features. The first unusual feature is that there are no menus. This is a one-click turn. So, for example, if Alex wants to go, she can go just by clicking here. There's no drop-down menu. The second thing to remember is that you always attack the character across from you. So if she were to take her turn, then she would slash the blue slime. And it would go to the next person's turn. You can see whose turn is next by this sequence, this queue up here. Now, this queue might look a little bit familiar to anyone who's ever played a tactical game, but it's actually more in line with uh, Radiant Historia's queue because you can switch with anyone you'd like. Switching is free. So if I want to get a lot of characters in a row, I might switch with the slime and let the slime have a turn. There's no AI yet, so I'll manually click. So now you see I've got four player turns in a row, which can be handy, and I might want to stack that even further if I'm really going for the big kills. Now one of the things that this really matters about is which options are available to you. You see that she has a slash, but she also has a combo attack so she can assist bars in attacking his uh, target. So if I were to click this, this slime would really get hammered. I'm not going to at the moment just because there's no specific animation for it and it doesn't really look very good. Uh, well, I guess I will. I killed off the slime. Woohoo! Yay! Go us! Alright, so um, now I'm back to having four in a row because I wanted to show you something else. Uh, in addition, she has a team attack with him, but his team attack with her is different. Uh, because if he's assisting her, he's using his magic. This team attack actually has a, uh, uh, a status effect associated with it. If we use this, it's a lift status effect, which launches the slime into the air. The enemy, I don't have an animation for it yet, so I won't bother. The enemy uh, status effects last until the next enemy turn. Not that particular enemy, any enemy. So that means that if I did do this, I would lift this slime into the air, and then I could pummel him until the next enemy turn. So if you're fighting, say, a boss, and you launch the boss into the air, you can do a long series of attacks. Of course, this is made a little bit more difficult by the fact that you can only attack the character directly across from you. Now you can switch. So there, I just switched. And that's a core piece of the puzzle when you're trying to... Um, fight a major boss or something similar, and you're trying to juggle all these various things. Uh, there are some other pieces uh, that I haven't talked about yet, yet that I will now. Uh, one of them is this. Not only does he have his basic attack, but since he has two turns in a row, he can do his second tier attack. This is where magicians are really powerful. Uh, their assists are okay. Their first tier attack really is very crappy. But their second tier attack and up are these massively powerful blammy spells that kill everything. He can actually do a, uh, a triple. He can go up to three. So you want to have to consider, do you want to do combination turns where you know, you're combining with people, or do you want to stack up a lot of turns in a row? And it really depends on what the classes are. Uh, a mage is very good at stacking up three or two or three uh, turns in a row and unleashing a huge spell that may even affect multiple enemies. But on the other hand, uh, a rogue is more about moving through... Uh, he, he, rogues can move through very, very rapidly, for free, actually. So you can just slip them in and out of the party however you'd like, and then they have very good assists. An archer can attack other ca other monsters without needing to do a team attack, which can be extremely handy. And, of course, there's lots of other characters, like the knight. If Alex was a knight, then Bars wouldn't be able to get hit. If the blue slime were to attack him, it would actually hit Alex, because knights de defend who's ever on their left side. That sort of thing makes this game, uh, I think, this combat type, a nice combination of strategy uh, in terms of how your party is laid out and strategy in terms of how your time is laid out. Uh, now I have showed you that um, uh, Bars has a double attack, but you know Alex doesn't have a triple attack. She only has a double attack. And that's because she hasn't learned her triple attack yet. Something to level up for, I suppose. Anyhow, I covered that kind of fast. But the point is you attack whoever is across from you, so your position within the party really matters. And you team up with whoever is next to you if you are in an order 
and you can team up with yourself if you're in order. So figuring out how your party is laid out, constantly changing how your party is laid out, and constantly deciding who you're going to switch turns with and how you're going to order yourselves really matters. And uh, I think it could be a lot of fun. It's very straightforward. One-click turns. I like it.